Welcome back to Daryl.io. This is Daryl Fumai again and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to download, install and configure one of the Linux distributions called Ubuntu. I like to call it Ubuntu, it's actually Ubuntu. So there are basically two types of virtual machines that you can download. So there's the server and the desktop. So I'm going to be showing you the desktop first in this video. In another video I'll show you what the server looks like. All right, we have quite a bit to talk about and do let's get on to it download ubuntu okay all right let me enlarge this now before i go into downloading hitting on the download button let me just quickly show you as you can see on this website there is server and there is desktop and by the way like we said already ubuntu is one of the linux distributions so it's the operating system that we're going to have in our virtual box and effectively we would have a virtual machine running the linux operating system of ubuntu distribution now there are two the server and there is desktop now the desktop pretty much is just similar to you having your Windows 10 on your HP or Dell or any brand of laptop that you have it's the standard OS with your user interface where you can click you can go to your folders you can copy you can use a mouse you can fiddle around with it the main difference between the desktop and the server is number one the server is optimized for production workload for your applications so if you you have developed an app or a software and websites or anything like that you don't host them on a desktop based operating system you'd rather host them on a server based operating system because it has been optimized for that I'm sure you already are aware of the fact that if you have your Windows 10 on for two weeks three weeks you start experiencing things that eventually you'd have to restart the computer now that is because it's a desktop computer it's a desktop operating system them. it's not optimized to run for a month or years without having to reboot but with server you can leave it running for the whole year without having need to reboot you can leave it on for two years three years you can imagine banks and big organizations that have systems that are always available 24 7 all year round you can imagine them running on a desktop computer it'll be you know a mess so that's one of the major differences between the two now the server being optimized for such workload is more because it doesn't have a GUI you don't tend to right click or anything like that everything is terminal based you have to run commands to do anything you want to do on it so that's one of the reasons why it's more lightweight it's not as huge in size as you would have the desktop because desktop has colors and all of that so we're gonna download and install and configure it and you yourself be able to see the difference between the two Ubuntu 18.04.2 LTS and LTS basically means that uh, you have longer term of support so if you download that I think the promise is about five years or so and if you download the one without the LTS ah you see so Ubuntu 19.04 is the latest and that's why this doesn't have LTS because it's still new and you're gonna have support for about nine months Okay, so Ubuntu comes with nine months until January 2020 of security and maintenance update. However, with the LTS, you have five years. So that's uh, the difference between the two. So this is more of a stable version. And this is because it's still new. People are still trying it out and there'll be you know bug reports and things like that. Okay, so we'll go for the LTS version and you can just hit on the download button here and it's just going to start downloading. Alright, so it's about 1.9 gig in size. I'm gonna cancel this because I already have it installed anyway. And there we go. Okay, going into right this is where I have downloaded my Ubuntu desktop. As you can see, what I would like to do is bring up my virtual box. Okay. Alright, remember we downloaded virtual box, right? And what you would have to do now is click on new. And because it's a Linux operating system with a type there, you could just select Linux and I will name this Ubuntu desktop. Okay. And if you click on the version, you would see that there is Ubuntu 32 bit and 64 bit. If we go back to the website that we downloaded it from, I'm sure it must have been specified here which one it is, whether it's a 
64 bit or okay if you read the release notes uh, i'm sure it'll be there so if you wanted a different version whether it's 32 bit you want then you'll be able to navigate the website to get that but you'll be fine with 64 bit anyway so i'll just say continue and in this page here it's asking me what memory size that I want now a couple of things I want you to be aware of before you configure this be aware of the size of the setup of your system so if you have 16 gig of memory obviously you have enough to give so you can say maybe 2 gig depending on how many other virtual machines you also want to create you might want to limit it just be aware I'll just leave it at 2 gig for the memory size continue now here's another thing similar to the memory is the hard disk I like to stop here and say a few things a lot of people confuse memory with storage so if I ask you what is the RAM on your computer I've heard things like oh I've got 500 gig or I've got one terabyte that's not your RAM that's not your memory that is the storage okay so if you have a computer usually there will be a section where they say RAM and there'll be a section where they say disk storage so if you bought a, a one terabyte based system I'm 100% well, I was 99% sure that you bought a computer with a one terabyte disk storage space not the RAM right so just to clarify that the hard disk is different from the RAM the memory is the volatile memory it's not persistent hard disk whatever you store in it is persistent if you reboot the system it would always be there and system softwares and processes generally use the RAM in their operations because it's faster so the time that the softwares will need to go and pull data from the memory is faster than if it had to do the travel to your disk so that's what we usually call expensive operation in IO so that's just by the way it's a very important information for you to know moving forward so just um, leave this as it is just click create and VDI is what you want virtual box disk image is what you want and just put a fixed size um, it's faster much faster if you uh, selected this and this is just for test anyway continue and then the name leave it at that now this is where we would now have to select how much of storage do you want to give this virtual disk so if your computer has uh, let's say one terabyte then you can take out of that and give in my case I'm just gonna select 10 gig and say I want to give this virtual box 10 gig out of one terabyte so that's basically what it means all right so create and it's creating and while it's doing that let me just um, show you something on the file system so just to show you where these things are being stored as you can see in my home folder there's a file a folder here called VirtualBox VMs if I open that up you can see Ubuntu desktop that is um, what we're just creating here so it just created this and what happens is with VirtualBox every virtual machine is just a file on the file system if you open that up you can see it's created a bunch of files for you so this is where you would find them now you would notice that we haven't even used the ISO file that we downloaded that image file we downloaded from Ubuntu website so this is the time where we're going to use it select Ubuntu click on settings and you would have to look for where is it storage yeah there we go storage is what I'm looking for and you see storage devices as a controller IDE you can see this disk here that is empty just click on it and to your right you see this disk here as well click on that now these in your own case you won't find any of these this is just because I've used it before so what you would have to do is choose virtual optical disk file so that is the ISO file that we downloaded that we need to select all right so I want to select the there are two that I have which is the desktop on the server remember we talked about both I'm not gonna select server at this time just the desktop click on desktop and okay cool now what you're going to do is click on the arrow where you have to start and just uh, select normal start and that is just gonna bring up this dialog box now you would see all these you can just um, cancel them out so you can have a nicer view of what's going on I'm gonna cancel that as well and just let it do its thing all right so we have this and it's asking us do you want to try ubuntu or you want to install it well i'm going to select english and i want to install ubuntu i'm in the uk and i'll just select english uk 
that's fine for me if you're in US or wherever you are in Nigeria this is my country I won't select that because I'm not there at the moment I'm in the UK so continue and here normal installation that's okay I don't want to download updates while installing Ubuntu that's just gonna eat up my internet and all that so just deselect that continue that's fine erase this and install Ubuntu so this disk is referring to that 10 gig that we gave to it not your host disk right so this operating system we're building now is the guest your main laptop is the host so from time to time we'll be using this terminology so okay ignore every other thing you're seeing here we're gonna be talking and doing things around these things in the future just ignore it for now install now continue yeah it's picked it up that I'm in London that's okay continue and this is where you specify what names you want my name Dare computer name I will just give it uh, let's say web server and password I'll put a very sensitive password there login automatically yeah this doesn't really matter whichever one you want it's fine All right, installation complete. You can hit the restart now button and this will complete the installation. When you see these, you can hit the enter so it can complete what it's doing. There we go. Now we have our Ubuntu completely installed and configured, okay. So let me just um, take you through what the UI looks like. Um, if you click on this, you would see the different applications show up. If you want to show applications, you're going to get, there we go. And it's got a search bar where you can type whatever you want. Type terminal, it brings up the terminal. In terminal, we'll be able to do a lot of things. This is where we'll be working most times. And just like your Windows 10 or Windows 8 operating system, it has a, a browser, it has its own Word document writer, I think it's called LibreOffice, you can see Amazon, you know, it's just standard computer, right, but not a lot of people use this as a desktop based computer, but it exists, some people use it, they enjoy it, some people don't, they use Windows, whatever it is, now you know what it is, so you can see what it looks like, if I want to type something, type in oh there we go but yeah that's it that's pretty much everything you need to know about picking up an ubuntu desktop virtual machine if we open up our virtual machine let me get out of this oh there we go all right so you can see we have ubuntu desktop is running and that's the only um, virtual machine we have now so we're gonna start adding all the virtual machines here we can increase the number of virtual machines we have in virtual box and it's completely out and different from your host computer so it's like you're having a computer inside a computer all right so i hope this has been very informative for you and i'll see you in the next video